Hey everyone, today is the launch date of the new products that were recently announced by NZXT at Computex 2024. We've got the H7 Flow RGB, a little bit of a refresh on the previous gen, a 1500 watt platinum power supply, and also some single body fans. In this one, we're going to be covering the fans and also the case, but I will be doing the power supply in a separate video for those that are wondering. Get subscribed and leave the bell so you don't miss that. But for this one, let's get this case unboxed and take a look. We've got some cardboard inside the polystyrene there as well for this time. Extra protection, I guess, is always a good thing. It's a little bit taller than the previous generation, but that means it can now accommodate a 420 mm radiator or AIO in the front, which is obviously a nice thing to see. This has also got a single body 360 mm fan in the front. They do have these available separately, like you see in this box. You can also get 240s, 280s, black and white. The case itself, of course, will come in black and white as well, and it was going to be £139 at launch, so it seems to be fairly reasonable, but we'll see what I think about that more in the conclusion at the end. So just moving this to show you the top, you might be able to see a little bit of the redesign already, but of course I'll talk to you about it when we get to it. On the top, we have got a power button that is illuminated. We've got some USB 3.1 Gen 1s. We've got two USB Type A and a Type C. We've also got a headphone and microphone combi jack. This top panel will just pull off with the little push pins like we saw before. And then you can install up to 360 millimeters of fans, radiators, whatever you fancy. You can, of course, do two 140s if you'd rather. There's no filtration on that panel, but given that heat rises, a lot of the hot air is going to come out the top, so you don't really need it there anyway. The front of this case just pops off like the rest of them on the push pins. This, again, is not filtered. NZXT have gone for a bit more of a performance aspect for their cases now. Just means you have to clean your cases a little bit more, but I think the performance benefit you get is well worth doing that little bit of maintenance every few months. So then taking that cover off, you will see the 360 millimeter single body fan that I mentioned. This has got some illumination down the sides and the bottom and top as well. This is the same that you'd get if you were to buy one as a retail box like this. So just in case you're wondering, they will match if you get some additional ones. Talk more about that when we get round to the inside. There's also two thumb screws either side of this, which means you can just undo this and then you can remove the entire fan frame for the front. So you can put your radiator AIO fans on before and then you can bring all that in after the fact it does help with cable management a little bit as well so it's quite a handy thing to have there's also four grooves on the right hand side for the cables to go through as well you can of course change those fans out for something else if you'd like to and like i said it does support up to 420 mil in the front on the bottom of the case we've got a little bit of a shelf this will allow you to install three 120 mil fans or you can do one of the 360 mil single body fans here so you can get some fresh air in from the bottom of the case if you want to i'll be using one of these in like a full build at the end really spec it out to see what you can do with this case but for testing purposes I'm going to leave this one empty. On the rear of the case at the top we've got a support for a 120 or 140 mil rear fan for your rear exhaust. If you want them to match you can use an NZXT core fan that will match the single body frames. Going a bit further down we've got some cable tie points for your IO from the motherboard, seven expansion bays and then where we'll install our power supply in a vertical position rather than the horizontal like traditional cases. For anyone wondering this case can take a maximum of a 200 millimeter power supply. So inside the case is where you'll see most of the changes from the previous NZXT Flow RGB. We've got a push pin panel for the tempered glass again, all push pins on this case which is quite nice. A four mil tempered glass panel very thick and feels nice and premium as well. Slight tint to that one. I believe the white case doesn't have a tint, just for those that are wondering. So inside the case, we have a support for an up to EATX motherboard. This bracket will come off if you do use an EATX case, but I expect most people use ATX. You can also do MATX or an ITX if you need to. Price, I think ATX is the way to go because it fills the case just perfectly. I don't know how well the camera will pick it up, but at the front we have got some curvature here, which will help direct that airflow. There's also a cut through as well for where your 24 pin will come through, so that's not going to be impeding any airflow there. We've also got perforations by the expansion bays on the back as well, so that's also going to help some airflow there. At the top of the case, we've got a groove that runs the entire length of an ATX board, so perfect for all your AO cables. There's also some more cutouts at the top for any like EPS connectors or CPU headers and things. No grommets on those, unfortunately, though. On the bottom of the case, we've got some more cutouts for any USB 2 or USB 3 headers, front panel connections and things like that. And we've also got the space for the 360 millimeters of fans that I mentioned in the bottom. In terms of the maximum dimensions, you can do a 185 millimeter high CPU tower, so that will take an NHD 15 quite comfortably. And then in terms of your graphics card, you can support up to a 410 millimeter card. There's nothing that big on the market, maybe when we see 5090s, but for now you're safe with any card on the market. So I'm just getting another 360 mil single body fan out for you to see. This is obviously the white you get black to match, unless you're doing a panda theme, but I thought you might like to see the white one, so that's what I'm demoing with. The end of these fans do have a proprietary connector that then adapts with an included adapter in the box. That then goes to a four pin for PWM, and you can either do the NZXT header 
if you maybe want to go into a hub with other fans or you're using the motherboards that can take the headers on them or you can do the three pin five volt addressable so they're not locking you into the ecosystem which is obviously a good thing to see so you have got a couple of choices these don't have any stickers on either so they're not too bad if you want to use them upside down so that sits perfectly flush in the bottom of the case You've also got a little bit of a gap as well so the RGB can shine through that's on the side and the top and the bottom, but obviously the majority will be coming from the hub. You will see these in the full case when I build it up as well at the end, so don't worry if you're wondering about how it will look when it's all powered on. So last but not least, the back panel. There's a big perforated panel on there, which is obviously important for the power supplies, especially it's going to be vertically mounted in this case. So we've got a little accessory box. Let's have a look what we've got in here. So there's some cable ties and then we've got the big lot of screws. On the back of the case, we've got a few different Velcro tie points. There's 34 millimeters of depth, if you're wondering about the kind of cables you can put in here. We've also got some support for some SSDs here as well. So you can do two hard drives or two SSDs. Then we've also got a little cage that you can take out here that will then take another two, two and a half inch drives. So that's a total of four, two and a half inch SSDs or two, three and a half inch. So just putting that back in, I like that that's down in the corner out of the way. It's quite a nice place for it, actually. Front panel stuff, let's have a look about what we've got going on here. So we've got a USB Type-C header. We've got the front panel all in one connector as well which is a nice thing to see hd audio we've also got the three pin power for the fans on the front and then either the proprietary connector or the standard five volt addressable there's also some other cable tie points so eps connectors and things can be nicely routed up along the right hand side of the case also a dedicated spot for the controller to be stuck as well which is good and of course at the very bottom we've got the area for up to a 200 millimeter power supply looking at this space it doesn't look like it'll actually fit an hx power supply but it will now on first appearance it doesn't look like you've got that much room for your cables especially if you're going to have the 360 mil at the bottom or you can't put any cables through there because they'll just be visible at the bottom so it looks like it limits your kind of space for cable management but i think once you get the cables over this side you know double back them if you need to if they're a little bit long and then you've also got these little protection bits for the back of the case as well so it gives you an idea of your clearance i think it'll be fine so that was a look around the case itself. I'm now going to put my test system in so I can do my thermal tests and then I'm going to build a system in this so you can see what it'll look like with the single body fans in the bottom and the top, AIO, high spec, graphics card and stuff like that. So you can get an idea of what you can actually do with this case. It also gives me an idea of the full build experience for something a bit higher end as well because my test system is a bit basic. So I'm going to deal with that now. It's going to be a lot of work but I'll be back to you just in a few seconds. Okay, so a bit of a lengthy conclusion for this one, but I have got a lot that I want to say. I also got some thoughts on the single frame fans as well. As you can see, I've built up what I think is a very nice system. I'll talk to you more about this system in a minute, but I do want to quickly mention about my thermal test system first, so I can tell you about the performance. The test system that I use for that is the Ryzen 7 5800X3D on an Asus X570 Pro Wi-Fi 2. Codec is an Octua NHU12A. There's 32 gigabytes of Kingston DDR4 with a Solidine P44 Pro 1 terabyte for storage and then 850 watt platinum power supply for power. All of the fans, including the pre-installed single frame, were set to 1600 RPM to keep the test consistent and reduce the variables between the different cases. So today is a very hot day in the UK, resulting in a maximum temperature of 87.1 with an ambient of 27.5. Removing the ambient gives us a delta result of 59.6, which is just below the bottom half of the chart as we work backwards with the coolest results at the bottom. The case itself is really easy to build in. I did try a vertical mount for this graphics card to try and make it look a little bit nicer, but it just didn't sit right. It just didn't look quite right. It was a little bit too squashed. Um, I think the vertical mount is more suited for cases like the H6 Flow where there's not much gap underneath. There's a little bit more um, space and it doesn't look quite right there in this kind of size case. Where you screw the graphics card into the bracket is also very tight. I had to use a fixed shaft screwdriver to actually fit in there. Just something to bear in mind. I also would like to see some grommets. Once we get a case over about £100, I think we should start to see them. And then it's also a pretty obvious thing that this case doesn't support back to front motherboards. I'd recommend you get your EPS connectors installed into the motherboard before you bring that into the case, especially if you're going to use an AIO. It's pretty tricky to put them in, even when it had an air cooler on there. So an AIO that's pretty thick can certainly be a bit more of a challenge. When I'm talking about AIOs, I'm using a Kraken Elite here. And instead of using the three single fans, I've got one of the single body frame ones, as you can see. But I actually used the power connectors that are on the Kraken Elite that goes to a SATA. So there's usually three four pins for the three fans, the three 120s. I actually put all the single frame fans onto that. So that's just a little tip if you want to keep your motherboard really clean, especially for the fan connectors at the top, because the cables that go into those can be a little bit ugly sometimes. So that's just a little tip if you want to keep it super clean. There's a pass-through specifically for the rear fan, which I like. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to manage the rear fan cables when they're up with the EPS ones, but the little dedicated pass-through does make it a lot easier. So talking about the single body fans now, 
I'd like the RGB cables between the different connectors to be a little bit longer. If you're using the 5 volt addressable 3 pins, it's not too bad, but if you're going to connect, say, the NZXT proprietary connector into the NZXT motherboard, the extra connector is very short, it can be a little bit tricky to manage. Now, speaking of the 5 volt 3 pin, it's also good that NZXT are including that, as a lot of, if not all of their fans, require a hub to work, so that's a good thing, so good job with that one there, NZXT. If you're going to be using an NZXT motherboard with this case, you'll actually have enough of the RGB headers for all of the fans that you can see in this PC here without needing a hub. I can't stand when I have to put a hub into a system just for literally one fan. So that is a bonus of the single frames as they only use one header per whole frame rather than one header per fan. Also, NZXT are going to bring out a hub that they announced at Computex later in the year. That can take four single body fans and then also a single 120mm or 140mm fan. So that's the route to go down if you're not using an NZXT motherboard as all the adapters that connect into these single body frame fans can cause quite a lot of cable bulk. So that will cut down on it. These have a two year warranty but I think they should do three especially because if one dies you're obviously going to be left with a non-aesthetic pleasing system. Otherwise, service replaceable fans would be another option. I also put the C1500 watt power supply in this system, totally overkill for the 13700K and the 4080 that I've got in this, but I wanted to just use it and also let you know that it does fit should you be considering pairing them up with some crazy high spec system. I also would have a dedicated video of that power supply out on Thursday for those that want to know a little bit more and see a little bit more about it. It's an absolute monster, I'll tell you that now. Price-wise for this case, I think it's about right. If it was, say, £10 or $15 cheaper, it would make it very competitive. I looked at a recent Antec case and that had a couple of extra features and, and also a rear 120mm exhaust fan uh, included for the same price as this. To be fair, the Antec was more performance-based, though. This is more of a showcase, so they're very different cases, but both built very well. I do like what NZXT have done for this 8.7 redesign though, to allow the 360mm in the bottom is a good idea. It does make the case a little bit more of a long boy, but I think it does look good in this kind of form factor. Also where we've got 420mm rad support in the front, it does make me wonder if we're going to see a 420 Kraken in the future as well. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the case, then of course leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll leave the links for this 8.7 and also the single body frame fans in the description if you want to pick any of them up. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to Dinner Racing. It was the Power Supply video if you want to see that. Thank you to NZXT for sending this out for me to review. And I'll see you all in the next one.